Okay guys, so we've got a really common problem on most cars, modern cars especially, just the power of them nowadays, the shape of them. Uh, they're all sports performance, you know, brake horsepower is massive nowadays and, and the roads are terrible, particularly here in England. So you get a lot of this. Road rash, chips, makes it look unsightly. So I'm just going to show you a quick method how we can try and improve them without painting them. It's something anyone can do. Um, and yeah, yeah, it's not going to be perfect, uh, but we'll see if we can try and make it look at least 60, 70% better. Okay, let's get straight into this. Um, first thing we're going to get is an old microfiber. As you can see, I've already been using this one. It's going to get wrecked, so don't uh, use your, your best one you've got. Just a general microfiber will be absolutely fine. Um, also got some solvent paint. It's not 2K paint. It's not got any lacquer mixed in it. It's just solvent base coat. It's not even the color of the car. It's just something that's similar. Um, if it's a dark car, I recommend going slightly darker. If you're doing things like this, it just seems to, the eye can't pick it up very well um, so it seems to work better okay so let's crack on so I'm just going to get some of my paint on a little stick or you can pour it onto the microfiber I'm just going to load it up a bit there we go I'm simply going to rub it into the chips uh, this works better when the paint's not thinned down so it's quite thick The bigger chips, make sure you really rub it in because we want that to, we want the paint to be getting right inside there and, and filling the chip. So one of the other good things about this method is it doesn't take hardly any time because, you know, after a good, well, only th minute, two minutes, that's pretty much dry and we're, we're probably ready for the next stage. So it's, it's, not, uh, it's not something that you need to do and then leave for hours and days on end. So we'll move on to the next stage. Okay, so what you need now is a rotary polisher. It doesn't have to be a good one. It could be a cheap one. There's some really cheap ones for... You know, not a lot of money on Amazon nowadays. Anything that's got a variable speed and it spins a rotary, uh, a rotary buffing machine. An old pad, you don't want to use a new pad or your best pad because it's probably going to get wrecked. Some people ask me, does this work with a DA or an orbital polisher? I'd probably say yes, but not as well. Um, never really tried it. Uh, with a rotary, you tend to get more cut out of it, so it, it's probably better at buffing off, you know, the excess paint what we're about to remove. Next, you're going to need a buffing compound. I've got Freckler G360 this time. Uh, you need something with quite a heavy cut. It's not so much a polish, it's a compound, because we're really going to be removing this, which is going to take quite a lot of, uh, quite a lot of cut to do it, so uh, I'd recommend uh, picking up you can do little bottles of it now, again on Amazon, um, Manzerna, Freckler, uh, Sholl, anything like that. Something with heavy cut um, should be absolutely fine. Okay, plenty of it on. We're not messing about with it. Okay, that's removed a lot of the road rash, all the smaller chips. Uh, you can give it a second go, so we're going to give it a second go. The 
if you get any really big chips sometimes just putting a bit on your finger just give it a little bit of a a localized one obviously just be aware that the more you put on the harder it is it's going to be to buff off so you don't want it on there too thick So just make sure that in some of the bigger chips you're getting all the polish out because obviously that leaves white marks in itself so pretty happy with that that looks really good uh, it's made a big improvement now if you've got any you know larger chips then with the same paint you know just touch them up with a, a decent brush or a little micro stick and it just it just finishes the job takes your eye off it obviously to make something perfect it needs a full respray or in this example this was actually the PPF that was that was damaged so it just proves that you can still do the same method even though it's a, a PPF covering um, it works even better on normal paintwork so you know for what it's cost and how long it's took it's a bit of a no-brainer really um, if you're just unhappy with how your car looks or if you're selling it or you know prepping it up for a potential buyer or or if you're a detailer and um, you know you're doing this as a business it's it's a brilliant upsell on top of a detail There you go guys, that's made a, a huge improvement, um, certainly 50-60% improvement to how it was and it looks a lot better as, as you're walking around the car, it makes the car look a lot more tidy. Um, I think if you're doing it as a business, as a detailer or a car valeter, then uh, it's all about expectations and, and you know what it costs to have it resprayed and re or PPF replaced as to what it's going to cost for you to do it uh, as an overall part of the detail. Um, if it's on your own car, then, you know, who likes to see road rash? Nobody. There you go, guys. Another quick video for you. Hope that helped. Um, please hit subscribe, uh, like below, and leave a comment. Going to keep bringing new, fresh content. I think it's got loads of value. Uh, it's something... DIYs can do and professionals uh, keep watching and like I say hit subscribe thank you